What's going on everybody? Welcome back to Big Chunky. Today we're going to be talking about something that I don't really talk about a whole lot and that is console hacking because it's it's a really big deal when someone's current generation console finally gets hacked even though it's definitely not ready for consumer use like something like the homebrew channel is for the Wii. But some consoles are extremely simple to modify like the PSP. <laughs> All you need is an SD card adapter for the memory card. You plug it into your computer, you copy over some custom firmware, and then you're good. <laughs> that's, that's all it needs. And for something even as current as the Nintendo Switch, all you need is a paperclip. Now, of course, the paperclip method only applies to a, a portion of Nintendo Switches, but it's a large portion. It's like 20 million units. I got mine on launch day, so this one is technically hackable, but... Honestly, I'm I'm a little too scared to do it. Uh, that's my only switch, so I'd like to uh, I like to keep it intact until I finally get my hands on maybe like the OLED model at some point in the future, maybe. Um, but the point is, it's very hackable, and there con console exploits range, of course. So those are very easy examples. You can hack them very easily. Going to having developer controls in the PSP is literally a copy and paste and going to developer controls on the Nintendo Switch is literally hitting a button with a paperclip um, but consoles over the years have gotten less and less exploitable or okay I shouldn't say less and less exploitable I should say less and less easy to exploit but let's slide over to modern vintage gamer the uh, uh, MVG is a channel that I have been um, I've been watching for quite a while. Uh, he's he's great. Uh, he has a he has a very extensive knowledge in the uh, in uh, emulation. Uh, I, I believe back in the day, back in the Xbox original generation, he was one of the people that uh, that programmed uh, emulators for the for the original Xbox. So you probably have you probably played some of his emulators back in the day. Um, but he's continued to uh, be extremely successful with, um, emulation and porting games over, like, he's, he's ported over a couple games to the Switch, uh, uh, or he's helped in the, in the porting process, uh, one of them being, uh, Shantae, the original Game Boy Color game, he ported that over to the Switch, uh, and Quake, uh, they were, they were, um, they were, or he, he heavily helped in that, so, Modern Adventure Gamer, super, super great, and he has talked about the PS5, is finally <laughs> is 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 exploited. Um, I remember for the for the longest time the PS4 was just not hackable and 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 whatever was ready was not consumer ready. And by consumer ready, I mean easy enough to literally copy and paste from a card from an SD card to the console like it is with the PSP and really the Wii. So Sony consoles have uh, have had a lot more uh, protection and better security than the uh, than any of Nintendo's consoles. Really, Nintendo consoles have infamously been very easy to to hack. And um, of course, whenever the Wii was the current generation, I was very into that. Uh, so my Wii has been homebrewed for well over a decade. Um, so I'm not a beginner per se, but I definitely don't know the language. And the process that comes with uh, development on exploits. So, with that being said, let's go to the sources that MVG actually used when he was talking to in his video. This is Andy Nguyen, uh, otherwise known otherwise known as the Flow, uh, who he has this person here uh, is very skilled in, in in exploits when it comes to uh, PlayStation hardware. Um, Likely, if you have used, um, if you have hacked your PlayStation Vita, you have used the exploit um, created by him. And, of course, now he has a big screenshot of what is normally only seen on dev kits. Uh, we see at the bottom, it says debug settings. So, that is not supposed to be in consumer consoles, but what the screenshot is, is from... A consumer console and this person is very reputable uh there, there's no reason why they would lie um 
but of course, right down here, he's they they say uh, there's no plans for disclosure. So, um, I guess it's a secret how how they got this working. But the point is, he did get it working, and all it takes is for one person to show proof that hey, this is possible for more people to flock on and say, okay, how'd they do that? And then we get more mines and easier exploits or more exploits. Maybe putting more brains together figures out a way to make the exploit more consumer friendly and luckily this works up to the current firmware of the ps5 but that also was a thing with the ps4 or 3 i believe and sony would just you know release a release a patch or release a firmware patch and would just force it um and that would be that that would cover that exploit and they'd have to re-exploit it. It's just like if you if you were really big into jailbreaking your iPhone and your iPod back in the day like I really was. It's exactly the same situation with that. Uh, firmware updates ruin hacking. Um, it sucks. But debug settings are a thing uh, that you can <laughs> that you can technically get on um, on a consumer PS5. So that's very exciting. Um, at the potential of what could come out of the of what could come in the future now obviously the ps4 is hackable but by no means are there a lot a ton of hacked ps4s as compared to something as simple to hack as a ps vita or a psp or a uh or a nintendo wii those are all very easily hackable and there's guides everywhere <laughs> and 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 methods to make it simpler and simpler over the decade or over the years yet yeah, de decade good lord it had it's been 15 years since that console came out um so hopefully something similar comes out um after after the generation i don't really like when people go and they hack the current console just so they can pirate games uh on the current on the current systems that was a really really big problem in the ds generation where people would just get um the r4 cards the flash carts and they'd just load up with roms um so the ds would sell <laughs> like over 100 million units but then some of the hardware that everybody is related to um that everybody has related to and played um didn't sell very well somehow so we run into that issue when it comes to current generation. So wait until all that stuff is 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 over and done with and people have made their money. So we can now go over to the next person that MVG mentions. Um this person here, the flow, or I'm sorry, fail overflow. Um, you couldn't pay me enough to decipher what's going on here. But the key <laughs> the key point of this exploit is that it is not the same exploit that uh the flow has shown so there's proven two different exploits on the ps5 and like i said now that two exploits have come out that's going to put more minds into people wanting to go and exploit the ps5 especially on this current firmware where we know that it works so hopefully something good happens out of this and maybe we can like the the console is extremely capable so even if we turn it into um like a really like a, a pretty decent emulation machine uh we could probably get some really really good results out of it but let me know what you guys think down below about what's going on with the current situation around hacking the ps5 honestly it's not going to be ready for consumer use for your, for quite some time um we best leave it up for the um we best leave it up to the experts <laughs> at this moment, and uh, hopefully they they'll they'll show us some um, some cool things that they've been able to exploit and show the actual full potential of the PS5. So leave me a comment down below and like the video if you liked it, and subscribe for more content like this all the time. And we'll see you in the next video.